Hi there, and welcome to another tutorial on uh, car painting tutorial. So what have we got today? Well, you don't have to be a genius because it actually says there. Today we're going to do uh, a lovely little original Fiat 500. Um, originally one of the uh, Europe's original uh, small cars after the war. Tiny little engine, but so popular that they're still making them today. Slightly bigger and updated, but uh, look very, very similar. So have you got your piece of paper? Have you got your pencil? Because uh, I'm going to start. If at any time you want to go back, then that's easy. Just rewind or pause the video. OK, here we go. So you can see I'm more or less in the centre of the page there. I'm going to have my Fiat um, pointing towards the left. Um, so I start with the headlight as I almost always start with a headlight in the center of the page. Uh, the, the, you're drawing two ovals, one slightly inside the other. Do the inner oval first, I would. Now, as usual, although headlights are circular and they are normally circles, when you look at them in uh, slightly from the side, it does appear as an oval and not a circle. So that's an oval which is slightly taller than it's fat and then just draw the ring around it. So we're going to put the side light underneath that. So come down a little way below the bottom of the headlight, slightly to the right, so that this small oval um, matches what you can see on the screen. OK, don't forget the little semicircle to the right as well to make like the chrome surround. Now we're going to start the bonnet line here. Now do a more or less straight line from only just above the top of the uh, headlight. You should be able to see daylight, but not a lot. And then from where it, that line is above the right hand edge of the headlight, you want to slant it slightly up towards the right. And then can you see you've got that slight slanted O? It's got a little funny little light there, okay? So we're gonna extend the bonnet line Keep going a little bit further up towards the right till, well, you can see the distance on the screen, but if you think of the distance from the funny little uh, light just below the bonnet on the right, think of the distance from that to the center of the headlight, and that's about the same distance you want to take that line up to the right. And also start pushing the bonnet line towards the left. Um, Think of the diameter of the headlight and maybe about twice that. We're going to push it further after, but that's all we need to do for now. Now, parallel to the line you've just done, adjacent, I would say, to just about the bottom of the headlight, certainly the bottom of the inner headlight, you want just those two lines slightly tapering away from each other and joined at either end because that's going to be part of the Fiat badge on the front of the car. And speaking of the Fiat badge, that's what we're going to draw now. You might want to, if you take the lines you've already drawn of that um, protruding bit of chrome we drew last time, and just continue that line and then slightly down, and then the bottom line as well, and then slightly up to taper and meet with each other, and then you can draw the shield shape in the middle. This doesn't have to be perfect. We're not making a photograph, okay? If... Um, so, and that gives us room to draw in the other headlight. Now, because we're doing it, um, because of the angle we're doing it with, we can get the perspective. And one of the ways we do this is by making this second headlight, which is on the left, a slightly smaller and particularly a slightly thinner oval than the headlight on the right. This is all to do with the, the way the viewer is looking at it. OK, people tell me they have a problem with perspective. Well, these are all little tricks you can do to fool the eye. Don't forget the semicircle attached to the headlight on the right to pro provide the chrome surround. Now, I want you to draw the little side light underneath 
and slightly to the left of the left hand headlight. OK, about half of it should be underneath the headlight and about half of it should be to the left. Excellent. Now I want you to draw a curve up which should just curve and touch the headlight just above the center of the headlight and then curve it round till it's slightly above the headlight above the center of the headlight there and that's where the bonnet is going to uh, the bottom of the bonnet is going to join up now i want you to do a curving line coming curving gently downwards and meeting the side light on the right and then just push the curve a little bit further round and then push the curve back up from the left hand side light up to the left a tiny bit and then i want you to draw a line from that edge that cor corner up to about the halfway up the headlight and join the line which is already there well done so you've now got the top line of the bumper you've now got the left hand edge of the bodywork it's not actually the bonnet we'll do the bonnet in a minute and you've got the bottom edge of the bonnet so that's excellent oh we haven't drawn the bonnet in yet idiot listen to yourself right so i want you to take a fairly straight line now from just above the center of the left hand headlight to just above the right hand edge of the right hand headlight and that line can be fairly straight really doesn't need to be curved at all and that joins up with the line which you've already made of the top edge of the bonnet we're just finishing that off now right so we did the top edge of the bumper last time now I want you to draw another line parallel to that top edge of the bumper a little way beneath it just like you see on the screen and then join it up at the two ends a more curvy line you want joining it up on the right and a more straight line at the end which is you'll be just past where that little fender part of the bodywork is well done just inside from the left hand side light can you draw in like a little circle which is like a rivet and then directly underneath the left hand edge of the right hand headlight draw another little circle okay now we're going to put in the number plate or the license plate as you might call it depending on what part of the world you're from now draw a straight line which is pretty much parallel to the bottom line of the bumper and you want to come you can see it's sort of between it's directly underneath a space between the right hand edge of the left hand headlight and that little part coming arm coming out of the badge and it should end on the right directly underneath the right hand arm of the badge join those up make the two downward straight lines and join those up and voila uh, or the Italian equivalent I should say you have your number plate there now we're going to draw the bottom edge of the bodywork so look on the left hand corner of the bumper left hand bottom corner come in slightly to the right from that you want a slight diagonal line coming down to about so that you can curve a line from that diagonal line round to about middle of the way down the left hand edge of the number plate then go to the middle of the uh, right hand edge of the bumper plate about halfway down and curve that round rather like a J lying down on its back so that the upright bit is curving away and about the same level as the bottom of the bumper okay you might also notice i very very gently with the ink started to ink in the curve of the um wheel arch now actually though that's thinking about it that's the curve of where the the fender part splays out slightly above the wheel arch sorry i'm leading you wrong there wouldn't be the first time okay so can you look above the middle above the center of the left hand headlight now the top edge oh sorry that edge of the bonnet there i've just drawn a little curving line coming in which is giving us the curved rim of the bonnet 
you might want to do that first and now we make the wheel arch now when you do a wheel arch think of it it's no more complicated than a slightly pointy upside down capital U now one of the legs curves down to meet the bottom of the car and the other curves round even further down to meet where the wheel will be. It doesn't have to be perfect, you're working in pencil. If it doesn't look anything like mine, hey, you can adjust it, rub it out, do it again, do it as many times as you need to, till you're happy. Because ladies and gents, that's why we're doing this. Okay, bonnet time. So make sure that you're starting so you might have to extend the bottom right hand uh, edge of the bonnet or the hood i think they say in america a little bit further to the right so that it's directly above the apex the top of the wheel arch then curve it with a line which is very slightly going to the left of center up just for a little bit and then you want a curved line joining those two ends of the two edges of the uh, bonnet together. Um, curving more when you get past halfway left and then curving right down there because that's the um, angle which we've got the car at. And there you've got the bonnet or the hood. Right, I'll talk about the colour scheme I chose for the car afterwards. But I really wanted um, to stress the Italianness of this car. Uh, for me, it's, it says one of the great things about Italy, which is a country I've always loved, uh, which is that even in a small, cheap, everyday car, there's this kind of feeling for style that it should look something a little bit special, which I think it does. So. What I've drawn is in the centre of the bonnet, I've drawn four lines to create the space for three stripes, which are going to be the colours, the red, white and green, or green, white and red, I should say, of the Italian tricolore, the uh, Italian flag. OK, also, I've taken a line, if you look right to the bottom left, bottom right hand edge of the wheel arch, I've come to the right slightly and slightly up from the bottom and I've drawn a curving line up almost to meet the edge of the bonnet but not going quite that far to the left and then on top of that I've just drawn that little shape there which you can see looking good face of the car is really starting to appear and talking about the face it has eyes i noticed when i um looking at my reference photographs that it has these like black parts of the the headlights uh and i couldn't resist drawing them in there i've also drawn in some of the suspension if you look on underneath the um bottom of the car to the right between that and the tire i've also drawn the tire as well let's do the right uh, left hand wheel first so take a line, do it from just inside the bottom left hand corner of the bumper. Make it like our capital U and this time the right way up, going down and then back up to about a quarter of the way in from the left hand edge of the bumper, uh, of the number plate, sorry. You can do that other little semi-circle curving line, which I've done as well for the edge of the tyre. But really, that's all you need to do with the left hand wheel before we start painting it. Now, I drew the oval in the centre of the right hand tyre first, which is going to be our hubcap. So the top of it should be in the center of the wheel arch almost maybe slightly more to the left than the right the oval should top of the oval should be slightly higher than the level of the bumper it should be about almost halfway up the level of the uh, right hand side light and draw your oval down until the bottom of the oval should be on a level with the bottom of the left hand wheel 
Now you can draw the curving lines from the top right hand of the wheel arch down, touching the bottom left, uh, sorry, top left hand side of the wheel arch, curving down, touching the bottom right hand curve of the wheel arch, and then right down till it's directly underneath the um, hubcap. And this should be getting, as it comes further down, it should get closer as it comes to the bottom of the wheel arch to the hubcap and then taper away from the wheel arch, curve away from it. Well, when it's directly underneath the um, hubcap, then draw just a straight line and then bring up a semicircular curve um, up till it's just underneath the bumper. The way the wheels are in profile, um, I did the line first uh, and it was far too thin. So I did it again and it was still too thin. And I just kept adding more lines to it until I was happy that it was the right kind of width. Right now, now if you've seen my Rover Mini and um, Hillman Imp tutorials, You'll know that this was the stage I started making mistakes, errors which I didn't realise until all that was left to do was remedial work to improve them, which I think worked, but I'd rather get it right in the first place. So you can see thin pencil lines there, which I've added just to get the overall shape of the car from the uh, edge of the windscreen on the left, curving down to the back of the car and also the rear wheel arch just faint lines um, but I was able to get the to get it so that I was happy with it so that I could sit and I sat and looked at it for quite a long time made some small adjustments with the pencil but I was pretty much happy with it um, so once I was happy with that I had a good idea about how and where to put the windscreen. Now, first off, I drew in the left hand um, edge of the the front of the car. Now that's you can see there's a, a slight change in the angle as it goes upwards and slants away to the right. That's about the distance you want. Um, it shouldn't if you measure the distance between the top of the bumper and the bonnet line it shouldn't be that far but it should be greater than the um top of the uh top of the bumper to the bottom of the bonnet line if you know what i mean that's really what you're trying to do once you've got that and you're happy then you can draw in the shape of the uh windscreen now it should curve up towards with the um, right on the right hand edge. Now this doesn't slant as much as the left hand edge. There's got to be and doesn't have to be a huge amount of difference, but it should be noticeably a little bit slanting a little bit less. The top the bottom edge of the windscreen that curves up and away from the bonnet and then curves back down to meet it again. Whereas the curve is much more gentle with the top line of the bonnet. And don't forget as well that this windscreen has rounded corners, which are, and then there's, it's quite a pronounced curve on the rounded corners as well. Once you're happy, then draw the other line parallel to the outline of the windscreen, just to make the outline of the rubber seal. Okay. Carrying on great guns here, guys. So from the top of the windscreen, I want you to curve another line parallel to it, almost matching the curve, but being slightly more exaggerated. OK, then you can draw from the right hand, sorry, from the left hand corner of the windscreen, go upwards to the line you've just drawn then come to the into the right until you are literally continuing the left hand um, edge of the windscreen and then draw another line parallel to the roof of the car, because this is where the um, canvas sunroof is going to be. OK, join them up on the right hand end, taper up to join on the left hand end. Jump down a bit there, I don't know why. 
Now, to um, to continue and make the sunroof, you take a line from the bottom right hand uh, edge and just curve it down gently. Don't go too far at all. Um, I actually came in quite a bit from the pencil marks I'd made. The pencil marks would have had me go a bit further, but I felt we could stand to do this. And then you've got that that sort of raggedy curve shape coming from the top right hand edge of the uh, the um, sunroof. Go at curving, almost touching the line and then slightly back up again. Right. Now. The line slanting upwards to the right, which is parallel to the right hand edge of the windscreen, curve that around to the right and slightly down and then slant it down until it's just past the end of the sunroof you drew and then draw a small curved line joining it with the edge of the sunroof above it. Now inside that, almost matching you want to draw a line parallel to um, the ed right hand edge of the windscreen. Curve it round at the top, don't go as far up as the windscreen, and then slant it down parallel to the line you made a moment ago, almost to the end of the um, roof, which you just drew, but not quite that far gently slant down to just below where you actually started making this window line and then a straight line joining the two of them up. You can do another line inside outlining that and then a line from the apex of the curve in the top left hand corner of the side, this side window just slanting slightly down to make the bottom of it. Now underneath the bottom left uh, bottom right hand edge of the window come down a bit until you're level with the place where if you extended the left hand edge of the um the sorry if you extended the right hand edge of the bottom of the bonnet which stretches from just right of the above the headlight right back until underneath where the windscreen starts imagine if you extended that line further back which you will do in a minute and can you see it's on where that line would be? I've drawn the little handle shape. It's just a semicircle and uh, a couple of lines next to it. And you can almost see our Fiat 500 now, can't you? So do what I actually said, extend that line from the bonnet. But as far as the handle, it should be almost straight and horizontal and then very, very gently downwards. And this goes past the rear window. You haven't drawn the rear, rear window yet, have you? We'll do that in a moment. No, we'll do it now. So take a straight line just to the right of the right hand edge of the um, front passenger window. Make it parallel, but curving at the top and then curve it round and down but not for too um don't don't make the curve too wide it should be quite a quite a thin curve and it should end just below the right hand uh corner bottom corner of the front window and then curve it up towards that right hand corner but stop when you're underneath where you made the line of the pillar join them up to another semicircle at the back of the window so you've got room to put some um, put a seal in there. Now go up to the roof and go to that curved line you made from the bottom of the right hand edge of the sunroof. Now I want you to draw a line carrying on the diagonal that connects to and then curve it round matching the curve of the right hand side of the rear window until you get to the bottom. Then you want to curve out a little bit more exaggeratedly till you meet the line which extends from the bottom of the bonnet. Cracking work guys, nearly done. So we're going to join up the 
back of the car which you've just drawn with the wheel arch. So what you do is this. You start at the bottom of the back of the car, which you drew last time. Curve up very, very slightly and then um, much more steeply down until you're almost underneath the left hand edge of the rear window and then curve it gently round. Now you want a diagonal line taking you to the bottom of the front wheel arch. Try and get it about the same uh, slant as I've got here as I think that looks pretty much right. But remember you're working in pencil, you can play around with it till you're happy that you've got the look. And you've got so much of the car now, you really will realize if it's right or if it's not quite right. Now, I've drawn in the um, outlines of the door. Basically, um, the line which ends parallel to the front, the uh, right hand edge of the front wheel arch. Just give it a curving corner before it reaches our bottom line we've just drawn. And you want a straight line moving up towards the right towards the back it should not at no point should it connect with um, the wheel arch you've just drawn just take it back there till it's about about a third of the way to the left of where the rear window is draw a line curving up slightly you don't it sh um it will curve round and connect with the handle but you don't have to go all the way and we've nearly there so what we've got to do then is put the rear wheel in guys now with this one i did do the wheel arch first you can see about how far down i've come and i've shaded it in black with my curve meeting the curve of the wheel arch at the bottom of uh of it there now the oval inside well it's got to be much smaller obviously than the hubcap of the front wheel it should start a bit higher but it should end about level with the center of the um, closer hubcap and all you need to do is a semicircular line from the bottom of the um, wheel arch widening out and away from the hub so that it's it's its greatest distance from it at the bottom of the oval of the hub then a straight line for the bottom of the tire and then just curve it round to join the bottom of the car i also did some shading here which you can see and that's it we've um drawn the car so let's look at the coloring stages now, because I was going for these stripes, I just had to do it in white. But painting a white car on white paper presents its own problems. So I looked carefully at the reference photos I was using and looked at areas which were slightly darker. And those are the areas which are painted in this very, very creamy, yellowy, creamy uh, colour. As just as to create the white areas as highlights. Now it's unusual for me not to actually start with the wheels, tyres and wheel arches. So I used um, a watery purple and um, a very bright in your face blue for the darker areas, let them bleed together a little bit and also just painted in blobs where the hubcaps would go. I used um, a watery grey as well to um, give an idea of where the different posts and where the windows are in the interior, looking through the windscreen and the windows. Now here I've painted in the um, top of the, um, the sunroof, the canvas sunroof, and also applied the first color to the stripes. I've also applied a mixture, um, a gray yellow or a yellowy gray to the underneath the um, bumper. And also, if you look underneath the door on the right, 
I applied also I'm start got to start to think about darkening the underside of the car that's why I've used that blue and purple okay so I've gone past the stage with the um, paints and now I have the brush pens out and it's it's made an immediate difference I use the red and the green brush pens on the uh, stripes just to provide some highlight areas and I think that's worked really well especially after I use the moist um, brush on top of them spread the color a bit a darker blue to the underside of the car and also to the um, left hand wheel black in some of the wheel arches and I also picked up some of that black color and spread it more darken the interior a bit more and you can see in the top right hand corner of the windscreen you can see it's even darker there also darkened the rear wheel arch and it's starting to look much more like what I wanted I also use the um, the moist brush pen on some of the black or gray areas and picked up a little bit of the color and just use that to um, give details to the headlines and also to do the um, background of the badge getting fairly close to a finish now uh, I've used um, a fine liner to create the rubber seal of the um, windscreen put the driving um, the steering wheel in as well and also some details of the windscreen wipers I use the fine liner to outline the windows from the interior I put the detail onto the um, headlights and a little bit more work on the tires I've also if you look at the rear tire done some uh, cross hatching there the body of the car doesn't look too bad now at all but I need to work on the underside so there you can see I've um, you had a fairly liberal use of the black brush pen and pulled color away from it um, where I've been able to create some gray and we're very very close to a finish and that's the last stage using the brush pen I pulled more gray off it and used that just to apply a little bit of shadow and to try and help the highlights on the to give definition to um, the face of the car the bodywork the bonnet I've drawn in the detail on the uh, badge and also given it a little blob of red in the center can you see I've darkened the sunroof too by applying a brown brush pen on top of the um, on top of the red darkened the rear tire with gray and pulled more of the black away from the bodywork uh, and that's about it a bit of cross hat sorry a bit of hatching on the the front tire and also in just a couple of places use the moist brush to just give it a more fuzzy effect and pull some of the color away from some of the edges like the top of the rear wheel arch uh, the edge of the sunroof um, and the uh, left hand tire on the front so that's it all that remains now is I'm going to quickly take you through the uh, stages of the process in about 20 seconds or so and then I'll bid you adieu.